Previously on Skyrim Anniversary Edition mods, we had a short introductory video covering main menu mods. If you haven't watched that video yet, you can go and check it out. Hello everyone, welcome to Loose Cinema and welcome back to another Skyrim video. In this video, we will be covering loading screens, HUD, maps, compass, icons, and many other tweak-related mods. All mods covered in this video, links will be in the description below. Now, before we begin, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon and all that good stuff. And if you're ready, it's time to do, 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 do it! So we're going to kick this video off with a loading screen mod called Less Boring Loading Screen SEAE Port created by Vendrick the Hollow and uploaded by Thuna Estra. This mod consists of 140 amazing law-friendly artworks, which also adds new texts of Skyrim lore, fun facts, and tips for new players. Definitely a great mod for any load order. And you may have noticed these loading screens have a different UI, which brings me to my next mod. Nordic UI Interface Overhaul, created and uploaded by Dopesan. Now, I only use some parts of the Nordic UI Interface Overhaul, as I prefer the Dead Diary interface, which you are currently seeing now besides the background that comes from Nordic UI. And if you prefer the Nordic UI interface, here are some images just to show you what it looks like. But personally for me, I only use it for the loading screens and the skill tree menu background. And if you prefer to use Nordic UI over Dead Diary, that's perfectly fine. Both are great mods. Now for our next mod, we have Skyrim SE Skill Interface Retexture, created and uploaded by Arndas. This mod allows you to customize the star and star pathways of the skill tree menu. It comes with multiple options including different kinds of stars, different pathways and also different colors. A fantastic standalone mod that leaves it up to modder's choice. Nordic UI also comes with its own star tree path retexture. If you prefer that one over this, that's perfectly fine. Or you can do what I do where I combine all of them together. As I prefer the globbing star in Nordic UI. Up next we've got two mods, Sky HUD created by Sky HUD team and uploaded by Farkas, and True HUD created by Ursh and uploaded by Urshan. Both mods edit and customize the HUD interface as made obvious by their names. And if you already downloaded Dead Diary or Nordic UI, you would have already installed Sky HUD. Sky HUD allows you to hide, scale, move and remove HUD elements. Other changes include dot crosshair, ammo display, slim compass, combined charge meter, and font mod support. It also runs alongside other UI mods like Dear Diary, which is the primary UI mod I have installed, so my HUD textures use Dear Diary's design. If you prefer Nordic UI's design, you can choose that instead, I just happen to like the look of Dear Diary. True HUD is a modular and flexible HUD mod, which allows you to move and scale HUD elements. This mod adds floating info bars for enemies and teammates. It also adds health bars to boss battles and is compatible with other UI mods like Dear Diary and Nordic UI. As long as you have a patch mod if required, like it is for Nordic UI, but with Dear Diary it is automatically compatible by itself as long as it is loaded after HUD mods in your load order. Our next mod is Oxygen Meter 2, created by PO3 and Osmosis Wrench, and uploaded by Osmosis Wrench. This mod adds an oxygen meter bar that tells you how long you have before you run out of breath underwater. This mod is also compatible with Dear Diary and will be retextured to the Dear Diary design. Detection Meter NG, created by Maxu and uploaded by Baddy. This mod adds a 360 style detection meter, white for non-combat detection and red for combat slash hostile detection. Detection meter was originally created by Maxu and ported to Anniversary Edition by Baddy. Everyone should have this mod, it completely changes the meaning of stealth. And up next we have a quality world map created by Ice Penguin and uploaded by Chesco. This mod is very self-explanatory, it improves the in-game textures of the world map. Not much more to be said here. Pastel Sky UI Markers, created by iTitomix and uploaded by Ember2528. This mod retextures the markers for the world map and also the compass. 
This mod is also compatible with Dear Diary, and if you wish to install this mod alongside Dear Diary, when installing Dear Diary, you will have to select None in the Map Markers and Compass Markers section. So for our next mod, we will be improving upon the Dear Diary interface by installing a mod called Coloured and Animated Celtic Icons for Sky UI SE, created and uploaded by Al Sopa. This mod adds both coloured and animated icons to the item menu and the magic menu. And just remember when activating this mod, it has to be turned on in the Sky UI MCM menu under icons. Our next menu mod is Stay at the System Page AE, created by Magus80 and uploaded by Magus80 Mods. This mod makes it so when you press the escape key or the start button on a controller, it will take you to the system page instead of the quest page. A very useful mod especially for fast save and load actions, and also for when testing mods. Up next we have Skyrim Souls Re-Updated, created by Vermuns and Fudgy Duff, and uploaded by Vermuns. This mod adds unpaused game menus and enables character movement whilst in these menus. It also allows you to set the speed in which time passes in menus, and the mod also comes with an any config file that allows you to modify all settings to whatever best suits your personal Skyrim. A great mod to add a bit more dynamic flair within your game. Wider MCM menu for Sky UI, created and uploaded by Uran Reactor. This mod does exactly what it says, it makes the MCM menu wider. It is also compatible with Dear Diary as it is made by the same creator. There are also a couple of different versions so go and check them out. And now we come to the mod Race Menu, created by Expired and uploaded by Expired6978. This mod is a complete overhaul of the character creation menu, including new customization features such as multiple RGB, A, war paint, body paint, hand paint, and foot paint. It also comes with a sculpting mode, and comes with a feature to load and save presets. Unfortunately, Dear Diary is not compatible with Race Menu. You can still run them both, but the design of Race Menu will just be its default. Now we come back to some more UI mods. Al Sopa Coloured Sky UI Active Effect Icons SC, created and uploaded by Al Sopa. This mod changes the Active Effect icons located in the top right corner with a more coloured variant. A lightweight mod designed to add a bit more colour and remove blandness from the game. Oblivion Interaction Icons, created by RBT and uploaded by RBT Rivelton. This mod adds custom icons to world interactions like Talk, Harvest, Sleep and Activate, like in Oblivion, with some extra additions. A useful small mod if you prefer icons over the writing. And now our next mod pairs really well with the last mod. Which Key NG, created and uploaded by KPVW. This mod replaces the lock level of a locked door or container with the name of the key if the player has the key in their inventory. It's just a great wee context mod. Up next we have Better Third Person Selection dash BTPS, created and uploaded by Shrimperator. This mod rewrites Skyrim's crosshair selection to work more like true third person RPGs. So now third person player interaction is no longer dictated by the crosshair. This mod also comes with a MCM menu so you can tweak it to your liking. Now we have Contextual Crosshair, created by Doodles and uploaded by Doodlezoid. This mod is pretty self-explanatory, it shows the crosshair when you need it, and makes it disappear when you don't. And for our last mod we have Read or Take SKSE, created and uploaded by Power of Three. This mod allows you to read or take books. If you've already read a book, the next time you interact with it, it will be set to Take instead of Read. The mod also comes with an any config file that allows you to set a hotkey where you can switch between take or read when interacting with books. Now if you use a controller like I do, I have found the hotkey 256 which corresponds with the sprint button is the best to use. But if for whatever reason you cannot use the hotkey due to other mods in your load order, within the any file there are two URL links which will take you to a page that will give you the corresponding numbers to each possible hotkey. 
And that's the end of the video guys, if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, give it a like and subscribe for more content. I'm currently trying to release a video once every week minimum, and as I get a good system going I may even increase my video output or just increase my video quality. You will all have to deal with my terrible microphone quality for the time being, but I do plan to upgrade from my Razer headset to an actual good quality microphone. All mods featured in this video will be in the description below so check them out. And for our next video we will be covering gameplay and some graphic related mods. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.